Hi, this is Mr. C and I'm just going to show you a small tutorial on how to create a collage in Photoshop. So just to make things a bit easier, what I've done here is I have the images that I'm going to use on my desktop. Three are my own and one is a Creative Commons search. And that image that I've used for Creative Commons, I've made sure to save the page where I got it from because I will need it later. And I'm just going to go in and open Photoshop now. Just start typing it in and it should pop up. And your window may look something like this or it might look slightly different. These little triangles in the corner mean you can change uh, the views for some of the certain elements. If yours looks completely different to this, I recommend you go to Window, go to Workspace, and select Essentials. So what we're going to need to do now is create a document to put our images on. So I'm going to go to File, select New. I'm going to select the international paper and yours may default to A4 so you should change that to A5. You should give it a title that includes your name and just put something like Photoshop Collage and your tutor group. Uh, we're going to leave the color mode as CMYK. Yours may turn out to be RGB but we want to print it so I'm going to change it to CMYK. Simply click OK and there's our document there and you'll notice the title shows up and I'm only seeing 25% uh, scale view of this. If you want it larger you can go down here and type in 50 for example and you'll see it, in, it will enlarge. Uh, for the purposes right now let's leave it at 25 so we can see the full page and what we're going to need to do is get our images and put it into this document. So to access my desktop, you see I have some empty space here. I'm just going to click there and the photo, some of the Photoshop tools should disappear. So I'm going to just highlight all of them and simply drag them over here and let go. And you see it's only showing up one image at a time. Uh, if you wish to rescale this, I recommend you go to a corner, hold down the shift button, and then click and drag the corners. Can you see that will constrain the image so it keeps the same dimensions. If I let go of shift, you see it, the photo starts to warp. If that happens, simply command Z to edit and undo it. What we need to do is place this image into the document. You see it has the boundary boxes around it. So simply click return and the next image pops up and it automatically starts creating a new layer over here for each image. Again, I'm going to click return. There's my third photo, click return. My fifth one and click return. Or sorry, my fourth one now. So I have five layers, a background, and each photo is on a different layer. What I want to do is work one photo at a time so it's less confusing. So what I'm going to do is deselect some of these eyes so the only thing I see now is my background paper and we can turn that off too if we wish. You see it changes to a grid system. I'll keep it white. And we're going to work at one photo at a time. Now there's two ways to do the cutout process for this that I will show you. The first one is what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this pen tool. You can also go to, if I click and hold this, the magnetic lasso tool. But I like it a little bit better with the pen tool. And I'm going to select that, make sure that this box here is highlighted, and that's your Paths tool. And all you have to do is just start at a starting point and just start clicking around the image. So you can see I'm going to cut out just this bird's uh, section of the photo, eliminating the background. And I'm just roughly going around the edge. When I get back to the beginning, you'll see a little circle will appear. I click in there, now the image is closed. So what I need to do is go over to here, select the Paths tab located here, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to this one here, which is Load Path as a selection. Click that, and then I'm going to go back to Layers, and then I'm going to select this box, and that's the Add a Layer Mask, and I click, and the background disappears. Okay, now I'm going to go to the second photo. So I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to go work on this one. Make sure that you click it and then it turns blue and I'm going to turn that on. 
And for this one, I'm going to closely go around the edge of the bird as best as I can. Maybe I'll keep this stick, maybe I won't. And to do that, I'm going to use the pen tool again, and I'm going to go make sure this tool is selected just in case. But for this, I need a bit more detailing, so I'm going to zoom in. To zoom in, I'm just going to press Command Plus. And then I need to scroll down. So I'm just using two fingers on my trackpad. It's a bit easier. And I'm just going to start here. And I'm going to go right along the edge. And when I click, I'm going to hold the click and just pull the handle by just dragging the mouse. And I'm going to follow along the edge of the object. Now when I get to something like this, what I need to do is I let go and I'm going to press the option button, which is next to command, and I'm going to move this little handle in the direction I want to go. So I let go of it and then I can continue going around. So I'm not going to make this perfect. I don't mind if some parts are left off, but when I get to areas like this, I'm going to try to follow as closely as I can. You see here I'm not pulling the handle so it's going to be a bit a bit choppy. Now I'll start dragging the handles again. And here I'll need to do the option thing, change the direction. I need to do it again. Now I need to shift the picture up, so again I'm just going to put two fingers on the mouse and drag it up. You don't want to go too far ahead of this because you'll lose some of your accuracy. Do the option. See if I can get this. And this I'm not too worried if it's not perfect. And I get back to the beginning, and the circle comes, and now my shape is closed. And I'm just going to zoom out a bit for that. So now I go back to the Paths tab, and I select the dotted circle, click that, go back to Layers, and select that one. So you see if I zoom out, it'll look something like that. And I'm going to turn this one off and now work on the next photo and I want to do the same thing cutting out this bird and then I'm going to do the same thing with this one and cut out one of these birds. Uh, what you should remember to do continuously too is command C or sorry command S to save and I'm going to change mine to the desktop and just click save now and click OK just in case if it crashes. So I'm going to do the next two photos and then I'll come back to you. Now if you do make some work that's not super clean, you can use the eraser tool. And you notice my eraser tool is not a very hard edge. You should take note of my size and the hardness I'm using here. I'm just going to tidy it a little up. But if you're going to do this, I really recommend that you zoom in as much as possible. Otherwise, it looks, looks quite cheap. 
Let's zoom out a bit there. Maybe I'll do a bit more around the head. Now I'm going to go on to my last image here. Okay, so I'm going to now turn everything back on. You can see this really stands out now. I don't really like it. So I'm just going to leave that off for a minute. That was just to show you. Now, here's where you have to be a bit careful because this is the red bird. Uh, and you see, it'd be easier if I do it this way, actually. So I'm going to double click here and I'm going to change it to just yellow bird to help me and turn that off and go to the next one blue red okay now I'm gonna to need to move these items around and figure out how can I can create a good design so to do that I'm going to need this tool and I'm just going to decide where I want these things placed and if you want to change the scale of the image you're going to have to go to image or I'm sorry edit free transform and you'll get the boundary box again and you should remember to hold down shift and I'm going to make this one kind of running off the page and I'm going to now turn on oh sorry then press return and then going to go on turn on the next photo and you see it's moving the red one because of it is still selected so you need to make sure to remember to click the layer that you want to work on now I want this bird in front of the red one so all I simply do is click hold this over here and just put it on top of the other one and you see now it works on top and perhaps I'll change the size of this one again so I'm going to go to edit free transform or shortcut is command T and I'm going to hold down shift and make that a bit bigger press T and then position it where I want and now I'm going to go on to the yellow bird and hmm, remember to select that layer and actually I want that in the foreground too so I'm going to reposition that in front and of course make him bigger too so command T and I'm going to press return now one area you're going to have to consider is how you're going to arrange these different elements and it must include text as well okay, okay so to put in some text obviously you're going to need the text tool which is just this T icon down here and if I press that you see some of the tools are displayed up at the top here and if I just simply click anywhere on here you'll see a new layer gets created automatically for the text that I'm in and I can just start typing in what I wish title goes here and you see it's running off the page so if I wish I need to make that a bit smaller and you can just use the drop down menu here and select a number but you'll notice when I move the mouse over this icon here and if I click and hold and drag that one way the font size will go up and if I go the other way it will go smaller as well naturally if you need to change the font you just use from the drop down menu here and if you wish to change the color just simply choose the color family you prefer select what you wish and click OK. If you need to move the text around, simply go to the black arrow button here and then just click and drag where you wish your text to be placed. If you like to keep a main tile as one size and an additional text box somewhere else, you could simply just go to the text tool again, click on the document, a new text layer will start to appear and let's say just in this area I have some subtext now I'm going to highlight that because you notice it has a lot of spacing in between so I could use the tool located up here and it's kinda like a formatting palette in uh, Windows or on uh, Macs pages 
and you have a whole slew of other tools that you could use to play with kerning and uh, spatial sizing. So some of these, if you see, if I click here and I just put it to 24, you see it decreases the, the space in between. So again, if I click and hold this, and just click and drag, it can play with some of the spacing that I want. But then if I change my font size, it might affect that spacing, so you'll probably probably have to redo it. And I'm going to go back to the black arrow, and I'm going to leave that blue, figure out where maybe I want to put it. If you also want it to be rotated, and you'll need to go to Edit, and Free Transform, just like the images, and just go to the corner until you see a curve sign like that. And it is okay if you wish to position it in a vertical format. Uh, one thing that I just ask you to remember is that your text should, I'll just click apply, should complement and enhance your work visually. Now, remember before I mentioned that I had a Creative Commons image here. And if we go back to that image I have, you'll see it says some rights are reserved. And if you're unfamiliar with what these symbols mean, simply click this and it stipulates uh, what I'm allowed to do with the picture. So I'm allowed to share it, I'm allowed to adapt it, only if I give credit to who it is originally from, I'm not selling it, and I as well share my, the work I'm creating. It. So give the appropriate credit, and you can see some of the details there. What I ask you to uh, at least do, and what I'm going to do is highlight this link, and it's quite long, so I'm going to use bit.ly and that will just shorten the URL to something a bit more manageable and I'm just going to copy in the link here click shorten and I have this new shorter link so I've copied that link and somewhere on this document I'm going to put in a new text box let's put it down here for now uh, yellow bird photo credit and I'm going to press return just so it's on a new line and I'm going to put that link there. Now you do not need to make that as dominant in your work so I do suggest a smaller size font. Actually I'm even going to go with six. Put those lines a bit closer together and you see this the lowest it goes to is six but if I type in manually four it will shrink. I don't mind if that's a very small size, I have given the credit and I'm just going to maybe put it somewhere down there. Uh, if Now you notice I'm clicking on, I'm not allowed to edit, so you must remember you need to go back to the type tool if you, if you want to make some changes and that can be a bit cumbersome. Now I want to change the margin here, so I'm just going to go and select that one, go back to the black arrow, move it back to over to where I want it to be. And that's pretty much it. And then the last thing that you'll have to do is go to File, uh, select Save As, give it an appropriate title, save it on your desktop for now. The format we're going to change to a JPEG, and I'm going to click Save, and keep it as a 8 quality is fine. Click OK, and it will be saved onto my desktop. And it is uh, this one here. So you notice when I open it, and I'm going to go to print it now, so Command P, you notice that this, it's smaller than the A4 paper because we had made our document in A5 size, and this should fit your looking log appropriately. Okay, good luck.